In this video, I'm going to show you how to sublimate on water bottles. And we're going to get started right now. Welcome back to the channel everyone and welcome back to another tutorial video. So glad to have you joining me again for another lovely super duper tutorial video. And guess what? In today's tutorial video, as I mentioned in the intro, we are going to be looking at sublimating onto a water bottle. Now this is a 17 ounce water bottle. This is already prepared and ready for sublimation. Now, if you are interested in getting one of these water bottles or maybe a case or maybe a couple, what I am going to do is I'm going to put the link to get these water bottles down in the description section. Now, just to let you know, it's very, very important that you check out the description section because it has the links to where I get my water bottle, my sublimation paper, and other resources and other supplies. And it has a lot of information to help you also. So make sure to check the description area if you wanna follow me on Instagram, if you wanna follow me on Facebook, and you wanna reach out to me face to face so we can have conversations via chat or via video call, make sure to check out the links down in the description so you can reach out to me and so you can get your resources, your equipments, your tools, and especially your water bottles. So enough about that. If you're new to the channel, make sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you will be able to get all the latest videos that I upload. So let's jump into my computer. Let's see how the graphic design look. Let's see how the artwork, artwork looks and we are going to sublimate onto this bottle. But before we get there, I'm going to step aside as I normally do for you all the time and I'm going to put all the equipment, all the supplies, all the tools, every single thing that I will be using in this tutorial video is going to go right here on the screen. So you should be seeing it like right about now. I'm going to be putting them on the screen here. You can pause the video, you can screenshot, you can take your notes because we are going through a journey here together. Let's jump into my computer and let's get started on submitting on this 17 ounce water bottle. So before we jump into my computer, I want to show you the equipment that I'll be using. So if you missed it on the screen before, you're going to be seeing everything that I'll be using in this tutorial video. So I'm going to be using here first my Epson Work 47710. Now this printer was converted into a sublimation printer. All right, so we're going to be using this um, printer here. Then I'm going to be using the HPN Signature Series Mug Press. Now, for the method of this video, we'll be using this mug press to sublimate our 17 ounce bottle. Now, you can also use a convection oven, but we are going to leave that for another video. So, we'll have that coming up in another video where we'll use the convection oven to sublimate water bottles and other items and apparels. But for this video, we're going to be using the HPN Signature Series mug press, and I believe this came with about five or six attachments with it. Now, we have our heat tape here which is very important this is going to come into play i have my scissors a small little knife i'm going to be using my cloth and some alcohol we're going to spray the alcohol onto the cloth and wipe off the bottles um, that may have on any grease or anything on them to make sure that they are clean now when you purchase your bottles and i'll leave the link down in the description once again for you the bottles come with a nice plastic wrap here, the plastic bag within them, and they come with their separate boxes. So I'm gonna leave that description down below for you so you can actually go and get your own bottles if you are interested in purchasing some of these water bottles. So we're gonna be sublimating onto three today, not one, but three. And then we come lastly to, we have a ruler and uh, our A sub paper. Now, this is eight and a half by 11 sublimation paper 125g but today i am going to be using asl paper same thing 125g but 11 by 17 yes so because we're going to be doing three bottles i decided you know what is best to use 
a bigger sheet of paper and get all the images on one sheet of paper then we will cut that paper and then apply the images onto the bottles and then press them separately so these are the items the tools the resources that i'll be using in this tutorial video so let's jump into my computer now and get started with this process so we are here in the silhouette studio program right now and I have my images and designs ready and prepared for printing. Now, we are going to be using 11 by 17 paper. So the first thing you would want to do after you import your images into the Silhouette Studio program is to make sure that you set the paper size or the page size. So we are going to go over to file for those who have the map. You'll go over to file and you're going to come down to print page setup and as you can see my paper size here is already set to 11 by 17 you can click the drop down arrow if you were using a4 or if you were using a3 or whatever paper you were using you can drop down and select 11 by 17 you have borderless or you can just use the regular one so i selected to use the regular one here as you can see and afterwards I will just click on OK. What this does is to set the page and everything properly towards the printer so that you'll be able to print on the 11 by 17 paper. Now, just to let you know, just in case you wanted to go ahead and to resize your image or your design, I'm going to use this design here on the left hand side as an example. Let it, and I'm going to zoom in on it let us say that you wanted to resize this i know that you can use um the corner you could drag in or you can drag out you can go up to the top here as you can see and adjust the width and adjust the height but another way that you can actually do it especially when it comes to bottles and certain items you're going to be sublimated onto you don't want that your image look oblong or too stretchy or or looks bad so for example you don't want your image looking like this on a bottle or you don't want your image looking like this on a bottle you want it to fit exactly correctly and perfectly so let us say we wanted this image to be 4x4 four four. right now the height is 5.322 and the width is 4.127 we could make adjustments here but also you can head over to the right hand side there's a lot of different icons this panel over here and you can select the one that says open the transform panel once you click on that you have different options at the top where you can align you have another option here where you can scale it you have another option where you can rotate or you can move now we're going to look at scaling it so you can specify the dimensions here and you can actually adjust the dimensions here in this section to whatever settings you want to adjust them to so we as an example we said we would do four by four and once we apply it you can see clearly that our design on the left hand side here adjusted itself let us say we wanted to take down the height a little more to 3.5 we could apply it and we have a nice squared image there so this is just an example that i was drawing in case you wanted to know how you can actually size your images without using um, the arrows or the corner boxes and so forth. So let's get back into more of printing our design. And also what you need to note is, I know you may be seeing some of my designs off of the mat. Now this will not affect your printing. Trust me on it and you will see, this will not affect your printing. Okay, but let us see you for security. You just wanted to make sure that it doesn't go past 17 inches in height. You can co come over to the first icon with the page setup panel and you can select on your cutting mat and adjust it to none. You can then turn around and select your media size and select 11 by 17. Well, this is 11.693 by 16.535 but what you can do is also adjust it manually to 11 by 17 if you wish but as i mentioned before um 
the auto mat which is 12 by 12 here will not affect my printing style because i've already set my page setup to 11 by 17. so right now um, what i'm going to do we're going to go over to file and we're going to go over to print and i'm going to show you the settings i'll be using for my print quality so we're here now in our page setup area and as you can see this is a print preview that they are giving us and all of my images are set and all of my images are in place now i did not mirror my images because my printer has been set to automatically mirror the images and you're, you will be able to see that right now. So we are here and I'm gonna click on the drop down arrow as you can see have my Epson Workforce 7710 printer selected. In my drop down area I'm gonna select print settings and uh, my paper source is already set. My media type is high quality plain paper and my print quality is set to quality which is the highest when you're using media type now and you can see my mirror image option is checked so once this option is checked and i press on print it will automatically mirror the image for me or you can mirror the image within the silhouette studio program but remember to uncheck this area if you do so but before we click on print we have to go over to the printer itself and set up the printing area so that you'll be able to see how to adjust our printing tray that so it can hold the 11 by 17 paper so we are going to go over to the printer i'm going to show you that process and then you'll be able to see the design printing out on the paper the same time so now it's time for me to install the paper as mentioned before in the silhouette studio program we have done our page setup already it's all about installing our paper one thing to note when you are placing or installing your paper make sure that you have the writing of the a sub up top so you when you put it in or you install it into the printer you want to be able to see those words a sub on the top okay now we have to make some adjustments and the reason we have to make some adjustments is because we're using 11 by 17 paper and not eight and a half by 11. So what I'm gonna do is to pull out this tray and then we are going to adjust it. Now, I'm gonna take it right out just to show you some different features and some different things about this tray. Now with this tray, you can bring it right in, you can adjust it out to different sizes where you do want those sizings of paper to be so for example if you had eight and a half by eleven paper you will adjust it to suit your eight and a half by eleven paper or a4 paper there are different measurements on uh, this tray so you can actually see where you want to make your adjustments but we'll be using 11 by 17 so the first thing that i'm going to do is to make my adjustments as you can see clearly here at the side and I'm gonna bring it closer. This is 11 here by 17. So I've utilized this clip over here to adjust my paper size when it comes to width. But when it comes to length, I'm gonna use this clip. I hope for you guys to see it and I'm gonna pull it out and also adjust it, which makes my trim much longer. So I'm going to place my tray back into the printer. I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to place it into the tray. And I'm just going to make sure everything is adjusted properly. And then I'm going to push it right back in until it clips. Now, something to note, when you're printing large formats or, lar or you're using a larger paper, your tray will not go right inside because you had to retract to make um, that area much bigger. So this is fine and this is okay as it stands right now. On your printer, it says, on my printer here, it says the paper size is A4. And I'm going to draw you closer so you can see this. It is saying right now that my paper size is A4 paper. What I'm going to do is to change that paper size and I'm gonna look for 11 by 17. 
and once I find 11 by 17 this is good to go So we have our image printed out and now all we need to do is to cut it into its separate pieces, apply them onto the bottle and then we are going to sublimate those bottles. Now if you don't have a paper cutter or a guillotine, you will have to use a ruler and, or a scissors and in this case I'm going to be improvising and using a ruler. So I'm just going to pass my ruler at the edge of the design. And I'm going to cut off that excess paper. So I'm going to take my small blade here and I'm going to trim off that piece of paper which leaves me with this area here and then what I can do is trim off the edges of this also. So we have our three bottles that we are going to be sublimated onto right here. And what I'm going to do is to just wipe these off with this cloth and some alcohol because any grease or any residue or anything that may be on them, we don't want to be on them. So I'm going to just briefly take some alcohol, spray it into the cloth and just gently wipe off the entire bottle so that any grease that may be on there will not affect it. So we have the designs and we have the bottles clean and we are ready now to apply the designs onto the bottles then we are going to sublimate. Now there are two sets of um, things I want to talk about here. Number one we can see that this design here is a clear cut. This is going to be wrapped around the bottle and this will not cause any line marks or any um, any lines within your bottle because these are two separate images apart. However, when it comes to this design now, as you can see, this is going to be wrapped entirely around the bottle. And if it's one thing that you don't want, is you don't want that your bottle ends up with a seam in the middle of it or around it, okay? So we're going to talk about that and I'm going to show you more in depth. So we're going to start off first with this one, because this one is going to be pretty easy. We're going to mount this on and uh, we're gonna place it. I'm gonna try to adjust the camera and bring it as close as possible. We're gonna put it just around in the middle in terms of height. And if you're not sure, what you can always do is turn it on the opposite side and you can get a feel for it, how it may look on the bottle first. You know, you can just take a look at it in terms of your height and your adjustments so you would know exactly where you want it to go and then you can actually turn it around and put it on. And once you are comfortable, you can use some heat resistant tape, which I have there at the side. So you want to make sure that it lines up evenly, that there's not going to be any design that's going to be higher than the next or what you can actually do if you don't feel comfortable with this method you can cut your image in half and once you cut your image in half you can put one on this side and one on the next side but right now I am more satisfied with what I have here so I'm going to place some heat resistant tape and then I'm going to tape it down And what I'm going to do is actually tape it, tape the two sides separately instead of pulling it, I'm going to tape the two sides separately. And then we're going to pull this image over here as tight as possible. And then we are going to get some tape.
So the first one is completed and ready for printing. So we're going to rest that aside and then we're going to take a look at the other ones. Now, <clears throat> we are definitely going to get an overlap where we do these ones. So just as before, I'm going to do a mock-up around the bottle first so we can see what's going to happen. And I'm going to be using this seam down here, this seam as my guide. And as you can see, we are going to have just that overlap, okay? So I can put it on the inside <coughs> or the outside, but I just wanted to show you that we are going to have to overlap it just a little bit. And to show you a little more that is actually accurate, take a look at the top there, right here. And you're able to see that it's overlapping just a little. Or right, let me try this angle, right? This is a better, a better angle. And you can see that white paper is there and it's overlapping just a little tip. And that is the look that I'm going for. So now, I'm going to carefully put it on the correct way since I've done my mock-up. And I'm going to take my time. And you should take your time also with this. You want to make sure that you don't have any of those seams in your bottle. And that's what we are going for here. This is the goal. Not to have any seams in the bottle when the printing is, when the sublimating is finished. So now we have our three bottles already prepared for printing. We're going to now turn on the mug press and we're going to start our sublimating. So now we have our mug press here. I'm going to plug it in. But before I do go ahead and turn it on, I want to make sure that the pressure is set to exactly what I want it to be. Now, when I pull it in here, this pressure feels really nice and good. You don't want it too tight. Um, we are going to be using 400 Fahrenheit at 60 seconds. 400 Fahrenheit at, at 60 seconds. And we are going to have to actually turn the bottle. So we're going to be pressing in total for, uh, let's say, 120 seconds so we are going to place the bottle in and we are going to press one side first then we're going to turn the bottle or rotate it and we're going to press the other side because the entire heating element cannot cover the entire bottle so we have to do it that way if we were using a convection oven we would apply our shrink wrap onto this and then afterwards we will place it in our convection oven. But as mentioned before, we're going to leave that for another video where I will show you guys how to submit these bottles with a convection oven and we will cover the entire bottle. So make sure to stay tuned for that. So as our mug press is getting up to temperature right now, we're going to be using 400 Fahrenheit at 60 seconds. And if you are getting value from this video, please make sure to go ahead and smash that like button down below and ask your questions if you do have questions. Now one thing to note which I always would do or always advise is that you can take a sheet of paper if you have, you can get some butcher paper or you can get some parchment paper but I'm using regular copy paper here at the moment and I'm going to cover my design or the entire bottle with some regular copy paper and this is so when I start to sublimate that none, none of that ink will bleed out onto my heating element because it is very important to always keep that heating element without any ink on it or anything bleeding through it. So I'm just going to cover my design here with, with this paper and I can add some heat tape to it just to stick it down to keep it in place 
and once my mug press is up to temperature I'm going to put it in and I'm going to sublimate one side first or one area the back part this area first and then we're going to come back over and sublimate this area so I'm going to use this tape as my guide all right so our mug press is ready and what I'll do now is to place the bottle inside make sure I'm comfortable with it now if you are not comfortable do not commit always commit only when you're comfortable so I'm comfortable and secure here so I'm going to now pull in and allow that to do its work for about 60 seconds I can see some smoke starting to pop up the temperature has dropped a little bit and that normally happens we are around 45 seconds right now as you can see here on the screen I'm going to turn it just a bit and I can smell it right now from my from where I am I can actually smell the ink I can smell the paper everything so when it gets to one we're going to turn the bottle and we're going to sublimate that other area so our bottle is counting down so I'm going to gently release it and I'm going to turn it and I can see some brownness on it already which means that is going to come out pretty good I think that brownness tells me that I may have to just adjust my pressure or adjust my temperature maybe take it down to 385 but we'll take a look at this first design and we'll see how it comes out because what we don't want to happen is that we don't want the design itself to burn okay we don't want the image or the design on the bottle to burn so when we take off that first design we'll take a look and see how it looks and then we'll decide if we're going to adjust the temperature or the pressure this is something very important when it comes to sublimating temperatures timing and pressure is very very important so we're going to prepare right now to take this out and one thing i've even forgot i have on the bottle cover you make sure that you take off the bottle cover but we have it out right now and we're going to see how it actually came out so i'm going to take off this first paper here and you can see it is really really brown it's really really brown so i'm really believing that we probably cooked it a little too much but we're going to take a look and see now another tip here for you if you're not sure if the entire thing got sublimated or not you can take a peek at it and when I say a peak, I mean literally a peak. So you can just go ahead and peel up some of that tape. And make sure you use gloves for this because this bottle is pretty hot right now. So you can take off some of the, the paper and you can just take a quick peek. And you can look to see if your image and the ink has come off. So you can see clearly here, just a little peak. That the image has come up here now that is one side you can take a look at the other side sometimes the paper sticks to the bottle I can see here so far it looks good so once you're comfortable and you took that peak if you're not sure then you can just rip it right off in one motion and we took it off in one motion and then we take a closer look here now at this bottle all right we still have some paper on here and this is the a sub paper we are using it left a little residue on the bottle but we can always wipe that off so what we'll do is that we will go ahead and uh, submit the others then we'll do a review on all of them Alright, our last bottle is already preparing 
to finish up. So what we are going to do is take it out. We're going to leave it there to cool while we take a look at this one. So we are actually, as mentioned before, taking a quick peek just to see if it came out how we want it to. And you can see that color there, but let's actually pull back this side to see if we have a line. Whoa, and we do have a slight line from what I can see right there. But we're gonna peel it completely off now and see that result. And it's not bad at all. And you can see that line slightly right there. You can see where it tied in. Let's take a look at the next one. And this one is actually even better than the first one. Right, so you can see clearly here. If you look at it very long and hard, you probably would see that line there. But let's actually put these to cool off. We're gonna wipe these off because they have some residue. Then we're gonna do a review. So let's review what we actually did in this tutorial video. So firstly, what we done is we would have went into the Silhouette Studio program. We had our images prepared and ready. We then made sure that we set our page settings. We were using 11 by 17 paper. We set the page settings. We went over, I showed you the process of how to install your paper into the printer. We went ahead into the print settings. We use high quality paper and we use the quality type as quality, which is the highest for high quality paper. Afterwards, we print it out. I would have showed you guys exactly how you need to install it onto the bottle because it's really important that you take your time and install it onto the bottle. If you're not sure, do not commit. Always take your time because there is no rush as you can see here we have the three finishing products right here um, so you can see and as we mentioned this one in the middle was a pretty straightforward because it was not going to be wrapped all the way around the bottle but we have an image on this side and when we turn we have an image on this side but let us look closely now at this one here that we would have discussed in terms of wrapping the entire bottle. Now, one of the things that we wanted to look at and we wanted to take note of is where the paper or the design joins together. We were trying to eliminate that line as much as possible because that line, we don't want that on our um, bottle. We don't want that when we are sub sublimating. So we have gotten as close as possible as we could. And I believe that maybe a little more pulling of the paper to get it as tight as possible with the heat tape and also some more pressure and it would have tied it completely in together so if you take a closer look at this one here and i'm going to bring it closer for you we can see just a little little line right there we can see that line there and it's tied in together i don't think that this is a problem it just shows you just that little line there as you can see and then let's take a look at this one because these are two separate bottles as you can see one is saying six figures is already done one is saying seven figures is done onto seven so let's look at this one a little bit more and we can see here with this seam is actually flushed and in properly this is wonderful so if you look at both of them side by side you can you guys can let me know if you can see it clearly but it looks okay to me or is it the lighting that i have in the background but it looks okay to me and of course you can just see that line there 
but I really truly believe that for some designs you probably will not be able to get rid of the overlap but as mentioned before in our other upcoming videos in terms of sublimating bottles we're going to be looking at sublimating the entire bottle so we're going to be using some shrink wrap we're going to be using a convection oven and we're going to be wrapping the entire bottle so let me know what you think about this tutorial video i know it's probably a long one make sure to pause to go back to listen to everything that i was saying take your time if you're interested in getting some of these bottles you can always look down in the description section where you will be able to see the link where you can get these bottles if you're looking to get one of these um, items where your bottle can actually spin or spin on it or your tumbler or whatever item you may have put on it i'll put that down in the description the link in the description for you so let me know what you think in the comment section about this process let me know what you think about the colors are they popping to you do you like the colors do you think the colors could be more more richer tell me what you think i want to hear your feedback and if you want to communicate with me and chat with me one-on-one -on -one, video call me one-on-one -on -one. you can always check the links in the description to my facebook to my instagram so you can contact me so i want to thank everyone for watching and i want you to know that these bottles do come with their own personalized boxes and a nice little plastic bag so you can put them in and protect from any scratches so thanks so much for watching again and remember we do make your prints and fashion come alive.